Hey folks, you just caught me in the process of starting something new. Um, I hate to call it an eBay miniature rescue because I think that's copyrighted by somebody else. Uh, but I did in fact get this miniature off of eBay and I'm going to, instead of, <laughs> uh, well, let me, let me break this down for you. This is a Cygor, a converted Cygor. Uh, you can see what the regular Cygor looks like in this picture I've got going on here. Uh, this is a Gorgon converted into a Cygor. Uh, there's no real better way to explain it. And I don't want a Cygor. But the price on this thing was cheap as chips, so I figured I would just straight up buy it and uh, put some new bits on it. So today, in the conversion corner, uh, we're gonna deconvert this thing. Uh, such as it is. Uh, so I've got my tools with me, um, which entirely consist of hobby clippers, super glue, a new base, and parts. So I got a lot of parts here. Uh, but the most important ones that I do have are the two extra Gorgon arms that are supposed to go on his on the sides of his body. Now we're going to have to get clever with this to try and actually get it to uh, <laughs> work. Is I mean, in, a, in essence, g g this torso clearly has places where the arms are supposed to go. Uh, but they've been closed up because this was built as a Cygor, and then they put the wrong head on it, and then they gave me this rock that and a, a spare hand. Um, I played around a little bit with it. That's why it's got this uh, bloodthirster axe on it. Um, but I think I'm gonna get rid of that in a little bit here and replace it <laughs> with a bigger axe. <laughs> so let's just do that right now. Um, so I guess the defining characteristics that I'm looking for in this Cygor are going, or not Cygor, jeez, I mean, even got me saying it now. The defining characteristics that I'm looking for in this Gorgon are going to be the forearms and extra big horns, because he's supposed to be a giant minotaur who uh, eats people. Wee! <laughs> and uh, by golly, I can make him a giant minotaur that eats people. So I'm going to take this... You know, with a lot of these miniatures, you do run the risk of uh, skewering your fingers, and I've got the busted up fingers to prove it. So I have um, I have the two arms that are supposed to go on there. I have two sets of horns off of the bloodthirster boxes that I have because I have two bloodthirsters because I'm a madman. Um, and I have the proper sized base for him. How do I best get this thing into ship shape as a gorgon? Or do I just go ham and get funky? Shoot. I was hoping I might uh, luck out and this thing's arms would be the correct length uh, that I could just kind of put the axe in both hands. But that's okay. So, thinking, thinking, thinking. <laughs> thunking, thunking, thunking. <laughs> well, while I'm pondering and thinking about what to do next, I can start getting this off of the square base because this may be a Beasts of Chaos model but there were uh, beast men before then. Oop, there we go. Easy peasy. I'm not really worried about breaking this base here but I don't want to mess up the model any more than I have to. Um, but, <laughs> and boy I have a, I had a trip with uh, one of the other models I've been working on. Oh wait, no. Hey, broke off in a break point, my favorite. <laughs> well, mostly. Okay, well. Leg. <laughs> the hobbyist equivalent of, uh, well, it can't be stuck if it's liquid. And uh, breaking out the blowtorch, but. Tis the way of it. Ugh, come on, there we go. Okay. So I. I did pop, I did break this, but it came off on the ball joint, which which is good, um, because that means that it'll be easy to get 
back on. I'm very curious to know what the guy who, um, <laughs> what the guy who made this originally, or who built this originally, I want to know what space age friggin' super glue he used. <laughs> Uh, I had such a bear of a time getting that off. Oh, he's got a horseshoe now. Or a bull shoe. I'm just going to slather that in glue and get that on there. And I'm just going to kind of gently put that on there. You see where the problem is, though, right, folks? Like, I push down on the foot and his back foot comes up. I push down on the back foot and his front foot comes up. So i got to figure out a way to kind of kind of even that out. But... Maybe if I'm just real dedicated, I can make it stick. Maybe monkeys will fly out of my butt, too. <laughs> Who's to say? <laughs> okay, so the hope is that it'll stick that way. <laughs> that the glue will dry and it'll stay that way for a little while. So now we can focus a little bit more on what kind of... How do we make his hands look proper? Like... And I do have... I still do have this giant axe. I was kind of thinking maybe that with a little bit of work I could actually give him uh, the axe around his like where his other arms would be but I'm not sure so we're just gonna kind of <laughs> moo well maybe with his full complement of arms he'll actually <laughs> look a little bit better so I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this uh, set of horns here and I'm just gonna give him a new pair. Uh, because the Gorgons are supposed to have giant horns and this guy has, this guy has Cygor horns. The nice thing about the Beasts of Chaos is that they don't have a super defined look, so as long as you kind of get in the ballpark with it, you can fairly easily manage to, um, you know, just kind of make make enough changes that it looks correct without worrying about whether or not it comes out of the codex properly, if you catch my meaning. Maybe like that. It's all about finding the right angle where the, uh, you know, where the contact points are strong, but also not where everything's pointing the wrong way. All right, well, one uh, calamitous pile of noise later, and uh, we've got... <laughs> may not look like much, but at least now he's got more horns and it feels a little bit more proper. Still quite haven't figured out the our, our little issue with the standing up, but let's let's get him all armed. Let's get those go side arms. Arm, 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 arm. I don't know. So the problem is that the way that they built this uh, torso does not really lend itself to having the other set of arms put back in. And, well, that's just how it goes. Uh, so we're just gonna try and get as much, as much of a contact point on here as we can. And, lo and behold. <laughs> now the, the biggest issue here is gonna be trying to get this stuff to I mean, it's not exactly the world's most dynamic pose, if you catch my meaning, but, you know, it seems to be working out okay. It's kind of, kind of like, uh, so what, what do you want me to do? I'll throw a rock at it, uh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sticks, that's, that's sticking together pretty well, so I'll call that a victory in my book, uh, even if we haven't figured out the base issue. A solution has been realized. Much as I would love to have him doing the Tusken Raider stance, I don't think that's exactly possible. But I do have another axe head. And now I have a, a nub. Um, and, well, it would be nice to be able to use this properly. Um, it's actually, it's the wrong hand. So, let's just uh, slap this sucker on there. Well, attempt to slap this sucker on there. I don't know how well it'll work. I'm tempted to almost put like an extra arm on him, like coming out of his back or something, just to be real kooky. Um, but I kind of I want to keep the integrity of the model 
as much as I, I able to, though goodness knows <laughs> I've already done a lot to it to kind of uh, de-integritize it, to de- uh, what's the word? To, to de- deconvert it. Deconvert it, I think. Deconvert it. You can book them. Now from here I'm stuck with a quandary because conceivably I could just put the other axe head on here and it would work fine. Or I could put like a giant whip on it or whatever. I mean, because it's all, there's no loadout for for uh, Gorgons, right? They're, they just come exactly as they are. So I could conceivably just do like, oh, I don't know, really. Um, I could just put a bunch of, you know, I could put a big whip on it, like I said. I guess I probably have some more axes or a sword, but, well, let's be reasonable. This thing doesn't know how to use a sword. I think barely knows how to use its feet. And lo and behold, we have a mighty berserker. A big, a big dumb boy. Oh, he's a big, big boy. He's a big, dumb boy. Look at him, and he's big, and he's dumb. And he's going to get base-coated. <laughs> he's going to get re-sprayed uh, with some Gracier, maybe, I think. Uh, probably going to use my contrast paints on him. So, the next question is, he's got this, like, well, what essentially is a boss pole hanging out of his back. But we don't really have any way to, any good way to attach that still, so I think we're probably going to have to remove that. But... We are not without uh, other ideas, other things to be done. So the biggest problem here is going to be trying to get this <laughs> stupid thing to stay upright while you're after you're done converting it and getting all this stuff for it. So the way that I tend to do this sort of thing is to just find another place to stabilize it from. So... That might not be as easy as I had hoped. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I just... Hmm. <laughs> Wee. Wee -wee. Hmm. Well, I do have all these all these shards that I can use and I easily be able to paint over. So maybe that's my solution. We use every part of the model here. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe stepping up onto the ridge would be better. I may have done it. Now, I'm not going to touch this thing for fear of it falling over again. Uh, but I think I might have just about gotten it to stick down. We're just going to be real conscientious and real cautious about this as we go. But... And like I said earlier, I'm probably going to have to put some green stuff or milliput or something on this to uh, fully get it to tack down to the base that I've got it on. But I, I think I've got it on stable enough ground that I could call this conversion mostly done. Or deconversion as it is. Uh, so I'm going to put this rock right in the middle of it. Just as a reminder of what I have uh, what I have taken from it. <laughs> and we're going to take that and that and we're going to clean up our mess and... This will probably be a uh, subject or a other <laughs> victim, if you will, on uh, tabletop standard, so keep an eye out for that. But, all things considered, I think we done did good here. Uh, it Now, it doesn't look like a Saigor. That's the important thing. Uh, if you're going to convert something, make sure it looks like it, what you're converting it into. Or at least close enough to it. Like I said, good enough for government work. There are some gaps here and there that I will take care of later with 
my full suite of gear at home. Um, but I think for the most part, this is as good as it's going to get uh, on account of the fact that uh, the Cygor model was not originally intended to be modular. Uh, so to make it remodular, we had to get a little kooky. Uh, but the important thing is we did it. Or something like that. Uh, so, you know, keep, uh, keep watching, watching our vids to check the progress of, uh, big boy here. Keep watching the Instagram, uh, miniatures underscore rundown, uh, to see more. And, uh, we'll see you next time on the conversion corner. He's missing a hand. He's missing a hand and two arms. <laughs> Cause he's supposed to have four arms. Oh, looks like he's only supposed to have two. Well, <laughs> that's that's a story that I, if you want to sit down or if you want to hang out while I'm working on this thing and listen to what it's supposed to look like, then I'll be happy to elucidate you, but I don't think you care uh, that much. Not really. I didn't figure. Boy, can I call him or can I call him? <laughs> <laughs>